Hi, this is Congressman Scott Perry. Many people have been contacting our office this week with questions about what sequestration is. So I'd like to explain to you a little bit about what it is and what it does. Sequesters were first devised as part of the 1985 graham rudman hollings Law. They were used to enforce limits on discretionary spending and deficits. The sequester expired in 2002 but was revived by President Obama in 2011 as part of the debt ceiling negotiations. In a recent book by Bob Woodward, The Price of Politics, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid notes that the White House devises an idea of sequestration. The current sequester is a package of automatic spending cuts that was part of the Budget Control Act, or BCA, which was passed in August of 2011. These cuts, which are projected, projected to total $1.2 trillion, are designated as a last resort measure if the President and Congress could not reach a consensus agreement on debt reduction. They were not able to reach that consensus, and the sequester cuts are scheduled to begin this year. The cuts are evenly split between defense spending, with spending on wars exempt, and discretionary spending, uh, which exempts most spending on programs like Social Security and Medicaid, which make up a large majority of federal spending. The total sequester cuts for 2013 will be $85 billion, according to news reports. Unfortunately, legislators don't have any discretion with the across-the-board cuts. They are intended to hit all affected programs equally, though the cuts to individual areas will range from 7.6% to 9.6% and 2% to Medicare providers. The indiscriminate pain was meant to pressure legislators into making a budget deal to avoid these cuts. The House Republicans twice passed bills last Congress to replace the sequester. They first passed the Sequester Replacement Reconciliation Act of 2012, which would have eliminated the fiscal year 2013 sequester and reduced the deficit. Unfortunately, the Senate did not bring that bill to a vote. The House again passed another bill, the Spending Reduction Act of 2012, which would have eliminated the fiscal year 2013 sequester and reduced the deficit by $237 billion. Once again, the Senate did not bring up the bill for a vote. Neither the Senate nor President has ever proposed a concrete solution to deal with the sequester. I wonder, like many Americans, if their hard-earned tax dollars are spent wisely. Mr. President, I ask, are you telling the American people that we can't save two cents out of every dollar that we spend? I'm not really happy with the administration's recent blatant attempts to politicize this issue, especially given the fact that the director of the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office testified before the United States Senate in February and admitted that the Obama administration has not provided a specific proposal to replace the sequester. And just two months ago, President Obama signed a $650 billion tax increase into law, but continues to insist that we must take more hard-earned taxpayer dollars to avert the sequester. Instead of following the House's lead by getting government spending under control and thereby saving and strengthening Social Security and Medicare, while protecting young people and children from a tidal wave of debt, the President has been playing blatantly politics with our struggling economy and the rule of law. Now I'm willing to work with anyone to help end America's trillion dollar deficits, but all sides need to stop giving speeches and put forward credible proposals to help create good paying jobs now, a healthy economy, and address the crushing debt burden we're mounting for ourselves and our future generations. Thanks for listening. I'm Scott Perry.